just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Packer Up, boys. And let's just do the traditional... Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Mm. Oh, wowee, mommy. Mamma mia, tastes so good in my <laughs> mouth. Um, anyway, I don't know what's happening anymore. Uh, the reason why we didn't do it last week, it was eight in the morning. Yeah, it was so, so early. Look, <laughs> even I have my limits, guys. Even I have my limits, but uh, welcome to another episode of Packer Up, boys. Before we get into it, though, bloke jerseys, Monday, 6 p.m. And you might be thinking, Kemp Dog. Or Beak, actually. <laughs> Why is Maddie wearing a jersey and you're wearing just your, one of your sample jerseys? It is literally because we have no jerseys left because so many people, and this is not even a G-up, so many people are keen on them. So we've had to like, basically what happens when you do a launch, you've got X amount, and usually you can you can take a, a fair amount and give them to your mates or whatever. The demand is so high, honestly, that we've made sure we keep as many as possible for you guys to be able to grab. That is Monday, 6 p.m. Also... It is $99 on Monday, so it's 99 bucks. After probably a week, I'd say, seven days, it's going up to 120. So seriously, put aside the 99, whatever you need to do, Monday, 6 p.m., $99. They will absolutely be at your door before Magic Round. They are literally designed to wear at Magic Round with your mates, get together, grab them as a team, go to Magic, Magic Round in your bloke kit, Everyone saw last year the amount of sick bloke jerseys getting around. Mm. So get around with a 2023 one. It is uh, serious. Oh, man, I honestly, I don't know which one I like better. I seriously have no idea because this one is so unique. The colours, everything. Um, but, um, uh, Maddie, what's been going on, mate? Seriously, what has been going on? I have actually been, I have been sitting here since last night. <laughs> I left a core stadium yep. and drove straight here and sat in this seat. Because I have been ready to talk about last night's game. This isn't a footy podcast. From the yeah, I know I don't care. No, no, but we're not talking. We're not talking about. <laughs> I want to talk about it. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know why I've got it in the notes. <laughs> it's okay. We're not. No. Don't um, want to talk about it. I want to talk about <laughs> Pythagoras theorem and oh. its uh, impact on uh, the younger Dryas <laughs> timeline. Pyth is that um? Is that a squared plus b squared equals c squared? No, Pythagoras is the the triangles. Yeah. Isosceles and... I thought Pythagoras' theorem was the large side of the triangle was well, C squared right. equals A squared plus B squared. Well, you, you finished school less years away than I did. I did, yeah. And my parents are math teachers. Well, that'll fucking do it. <laughs> Jesus, you forgot to mention that, didn't you? I did. It's yeah. like saying my dad's Joey and I don't know how to throw a fucking footy ball. Jesus Christ. I could be wrong, though. You, I mean, you've known to be wrong. <laughs> you've known to be wrong. If there's one thing you do well, it's be wrong. Um... No, no, obviously we'll get to the game. We'll absolutely get to the game. It's been a chocker block week. This week we uh, obviously got to drop the Jonathan Thurston interview. We had the Monday show. We had the Wednesday show with Cam Smith. We obviously had the DMP yesterday. Then I just literally drove from Rose Hill where we had the show with Maddie Johns and Webby out to here to do Packer Up, boys. And when you're like, I'm driving on the way back here and I just sit there and I go, what the hell is going on? What is going on? Like what? Cam Smith, Jonathan Thurston. Matty Johns. <laughs> it's just, isn't it wild? It is. Oh, and the great Tom and Eddie, of, of course. Yeah. And obviously the great Matty the Waterboy. But it is absolutely wild. Who would have thought a 40-game winger doing absolutely nothing would be hanging out with those blokes? It's a joke. And I'm glad a no, nothing game nobody like me gets to hang on, <laughs> hang on as well. <laughs> like oh. hanging, being around Thurston last week, I was just like, I forgot I was like working at some points. Like Mate. I was pushing the buttons like out of muscle memory but yeah. like i was just literally just staring at him i just when he was like, telling stories i kept wanting to say you know you're jonathan thurston right <laughs> like you're jonathan thurston that's you i tell you what i noticed and like everyone talks about um how competitive he was how he's like just the number one competitor always wanted to win you could really tell you could really see that in the way he spoke yeah like even the games he lost still he'd, singing he'd be like There'd be a ref's call. He just he just mention it. He just yeah. he wouldn't say it. Wouldn't say anything about it. He'd be like, yeah. yeah, there was a ref's call. I was angry about all this from like 2005. I oh, know he's and, such a competitor. And you still stinging him. Oh yeah, you could, yeah, so Mate, good. The yarn about him, like you know, yelling at Lockie during Queen like Origin, going, mm. they don't want us to win. They don't want us to win. Yeah. It's just like, wow, oh, that's so good. <gasps> um, oh, so it. yeah, it's been an incredible and. Uh, 
And that's thanks to Nine, guys. That's thanks to Nine. This actually wasn't going to turn into an ad, but I'm turning into an ad because Why? I am actually extremely grateful because, as I said, all, all we got to do, guys, go and watch footy on Nine now and we get access to the best talent in the history of the game. Yeah. In the history of the game. So the, the more people that go and watch footy now or Nine now, and it is the best app. Seriously, the commentary is incredible. So last night, what, what did you have? We have uh, Matt White. Uh, so Matt Thompson, Matt Thompson, was sorry, and Freddie, Freddie and Joey, Joey and Billy and Billy. Yeah, are you serious? I think so. Freddie and Joey, obviously, they've been around forever in the media yeah. game. Joey's analysis is the best. Freddie's analysis is also like great, but he's also extremely entertaining. Yeah, Billy Slater oh is God. the new kid on the block, oh and he God. is no wonder he's a coach. Yeah, Billy Slater's like, and he gives you insights that you wouldn't have seen before, like yeah. that you're just not looking at. Oh, and he's also he's really articulate. So that commentary team, it's undefeated, undefeated. Did you see when Joey and um, Freddie were having- the bro? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why we have cameras, bro. <laughs> that's why we have cameras, bro. <laughs> and he's like, he did it with the bro. It was so good, so good. Yeah. Hey, and you know what? There actually wasn't that many ads. Wasn't there? I was at the game. What, like, well, I watch Nine all the time and there's never- it, yeah. Like this idea, and, and I know it sounds like, obviously I'm partnered with them. So I know people are gonna be like, oh, you're only saying that. But like, I'll be honest, like I used to flip between obviously other, um, platforms yeah so i wasn't as familiar there really isn't that many ads and i, I swear on everything i'm not just saying it there, there's clearly ads but nowhere near as much as i thought there was and maybe that's the nine now side of things i'm not sure maybe yeah. it's different on on uh, network television so mm. please i'm just talking about the nine now i yeah it was fantastic oh, i'll be honest i've always been a i've nine always guy. watched nine because i just like their um their color commentators better so like good. back when like even back in the day when they had um Sturlo, because he's yeah. probably the goat analysis, or yeah, one, oh, one of them. Man, he was good. And now they've just, and obviously Freddie and Joey. Yep, I, Cam as well. I, yeah, Gal. and Cam. Yeah, I love Gus as well. I know yeah. a lot of people don't, but I love listening to him. Yeah. Um. Obviously, they used to have Ray Warren, but now they're just bringing in all the all the, oh, or, so like the Queensland good. origin greats who have all come in. Yep. And yeah, I, I've always been a nine guy for sure. Um, and so, yeah, guys, make sure stream live and all games for free on Nine Now. Uh, this week they got uh, Eels Broncos and then Sunday afternoon Tigers Manly. Then the big one, Roosters Dragons next Tuesday. The biggest games and the best commentary for free. Get on and stream it now anywhere, anytime. So stop the potty, go download the Nine Now app. It is actually really intuitive. I think they've actually improved it quite a bit a couple of years ago. Like, oh, I'll be honest, it was, a, it was a bit tough. Yeah. It's so much better now. Yeah, so the 9 hour, nine hour app's great. Um, so make sure to do that, guys. Uh, and also, before we get into it, we are going to be at Magic Round. Yes! Can't so, wait. obviously, we got Saturday at the Caxton. It'll be myself, Maddie, Timmy, Guru, Tom, Eddie, doing a meet and greet. There is a tiny chance... We, we're definitely going to do a meet and greet, most likely at one o'clock at the Caxton Hotel. There is a tiny chance we may even be able to do a live show. We haven't confirmed that yet. We've request, requested whether we could do it for the punter and the dribbler, um, but we would definitely be there. We, this is honestly, if there's one time of the year to come down and say hi, this is it. Because like, mm. this is a celebration of the whole community and each year it has just been massive. So make sure to come down and say hi. It's more, honestly, it's more for us to say thank you. It really is. Come down, say hi. Uh, I think even this year I might try and like bring up some like prizes to give away and stuff like that. I want to make it yeah. bigger. I want to make it bigger. I want to make it a big scene. So we'll be there. Also, uh, sports bet, uh, Magic Round. This year, Sportsbet uh, Madrid is, is uh, obviously it's the biggest round of the year. We all know that. And Sportsbet, they're referring it to it as tragic round. Tragic mm. round. So what we need you to do, you can win three nights accommodation, a ticket to three of the days, so all a magic round, plus flights paid for by Sportsbet. All you have to do is ring up the number, if you've got here, 02 8405 7938. 02-8405-7938 and tell us why you're rugby league's greatest tragic because we call it a tragic round. And what I mean by that is, is like you absolutely love rugby league. And if you win, we're picking, I think it's three, three, three people. No, no. Or two, three people. Anyway, I yeah. I'm pretty sure it's three. When you win, you get to jump inside a five headed Jersey that has every jersey stitched together with the great Gurino and Hammy from Sportsbet. What an opportunity. Plus, obviously I'll be there with Sportsbet. Um, you know, so obviously you, we can chat or whatever. 
we are giving out prizes that you absolutely cannot get. You cannot get anywhere else, and I promise you guys, the prizes that we're planning to give away to these winners are fucking sick. Like we're, when we talk limited edition, we're talking like literally only two or three made. So, right. so call in 02-8405-7938 and give us uh, your best story in regards to why you're such a tragic. You must leave your name and your phone number, otherwise we can't get back to you. And you must be over 18. All terms and conditions can be found on Sportsbet website. Guys, the more entries, again, Sportsbet, Sportsbet back us. So back them. The more entries we get, the better it is for us and the more big things we can do. As you've seen over the last few years, bloke's content, we've just increased it and increased it and increased it. And the only way we can do that is if we support our partners that support us. Um, but let's talk to the, about the biggest news. Holy heckers, holy heckers. So, Roger to a oh. snack. My God, he's back. Oh, man. You can't see my ankles right now, but they're strapped. <laughs> I literally strapped my ankles to talk about this. I strapped them. Because I, I might break my ankles strap talking about the great RTS. Mm. Also, just quietly, I got a few comments on me shiny legs last week. Yeah, I did say that. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I shaved my legs. But <laughs> this is a reason why I shaved my legs. First of all, <laughs> blokes, do whatever the fuck you want. Who gives – like, if you want to shave your legs, shave your legs. Who gives a shit, for one? But two, the reason why I shave my legs is – so when when I was playing soccer, we, you obviously used to strap your ankles quite a lot because mm. um, there's a lot of, like, ankle injuries in soccer. And it – used to rip your hair off all the time. So I've, I've been shaving my legs since I was in like grade, I, can, I don't know, 10 or something like that. Because like what happens is, is you'd roll around and you'd, soccer players know this, you'd have shave your legs up to there and then hair would start. Right. So it would look really weird because cause what you do is you just shave where the strapping was so it didn't hurt and you were ripping hairs each time you took your strapping tape off. And so basically I was like, well, if I'm shaving it there, I may as well shave my whole legs. Yeah. And then obviously got used to it. Yeah, fair enough. Got used to it and you know what? I think they look nice. I think they look good too. Thanks, bro. Appreciate yeah. it. I don't need to shave my legs because you can't even see my blonde hairs. What about three of them? But. Yeah. Look, to each their own. To each their own. Uh, anyway, back to RTS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, what an incredible signing by the Warriors. Now, my mail from uh, pretty good sources, mm. he will play centre. He Roger will play, play centre. Center. Roger will play centre. Wow. Yes. Which I think is actually really smart. Yeah. It's really smart. Yeah. yeah because sure. I, I've, I've got a feeling they didn't break the bank to get him back for one. Mm. And also, he's a bit older now. Do you really want him bashing his body up, doing 250 metres a game? Mm, you know, true. do you really want that? Whereas Joey Manu has shown you can you can inject yourself if you want to into yeah. a game. And also, the Warriors, they don't have a mil- they don't have Suali, Tedesco, Manu, Cheese. All these different players need to get their hands on the ball. They've literally got RTS would be their main strike weapon. So he could just come in when he wants to and then go back out to the centre. They elongate his career. I, I love it. I, I love it. didn't even cross my mind until you said that. I just assumed Chance would go to centre and Roger would play fullback. That is that is so good. Yeah. Because Chance, Chance in the prime of his career, mm. he has no trouble running a million metres yep. a game and doing a ton of work, and plus doing all the – like all the extra things on the side that you need to do to be a silky fullback. But you're right, Roger can just do what Joey Manu does because, I mean, Roger's still – I you know, I don't know if he's killing it in rugby, but I'm sure he's, he'll come back and kill it for sure yeah. in rugby league. Mm. Um, yeah, oh, if that's if that's the case, I'm I'm all for it. I mean, yeah. I'm all for Charles being centre and Roger being fullback as well, yeah. but I'm, I think I'm I – like, I like that even better. Because, like, can you imagine early ball with a bit of space out there, mm. Roger? He's stepping you every day of the week. Yeah. And you just go, we don't need you to, like, come in and do the hit-ups if you want. But if you if you just want to stay out there and just do the big plays that we know he can do, yeah. he does it. Especially as well, I think Chance, I I, I've never met Chance, but just by looking at him play, it seems like he's a kind of guy that really just wants to rip in, wants yeah. to, like, get his hands on the ball. So he'd probably be wasted out in centre anyway, where mm. Roger, you can kind of, as Joey talked about Latrella a few years ago, just keep the Ferrari in the garage a little bit, yeah. and then he can just do whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of that for sure. Oh, I love it. And... Isn't it an exciting time to be a Warriors fan? I haven't been this excited for the Warriors. You know, there was excitement when they had RTS, Sean Johnson, and Isaac Luke. Yeah. There was there was excitement there. Yeah. Who, who was their six again? Foreign. Foreign. Yeah. And so you're like, definitely excitement. But they went on and played, and we saw them play together, and it just didn't seem to click. Didn't work. Yeah. Whereas what I'm excited here is we've seen them play, and they're clicking. Yeah. So if you add a superstar onto that, mm. it is just so exciting. 
And Andrew Webster continues to push for Dally M Coach of the Year. I know, Absolutely. I know it's early days, guys. I'm not saying that he he you know he should get it now. I'm just saying, like, if you were to pick a Dally M Coach round eight right yeah. now, if the Dally M's were tomorrow, and he's winning, hundred percent. He's won, yeah. And it's not even close, in my opinion. Nah, like not even close. So yeah, up the Warriors, eh? Oh, I'm so excited. Like, he's just one of those guys. Be like Benji. Like, find me one person that doesn't like him. Oh my god. Just couldn't believe that news when yep. i think it was you texting me about it yesterday i like i i read it and i was like i had to look twice i'm like yeah. oh, no fucking way and i'm pretty sure he's still look rugby union people correct me in the comments pretty sure he's, he's still in line to play the world cup this year i don't think he's i don't know if he's gonna get picked mm. but i saw a tweet from sunny bill saying he's he's a chance of still playing the world cup this year yeah. so that'd be good it's so so good and like that's the kind of big marquee player that can get other people across yep. to sign with the club. So and I like that it's a three-year deal as well. Yeah. So I think the original report um, in the Daily Telegraph was one year, and I was like, oh, okay, that's all right. But then mm. when the Warriors announced that it was three years, I was like, mm. okay, yeah, really good stuff. Also, I know we'll get to the um, we'll get to the sports betting tips for the week. I can't believe the Warriors are four bucks to beat Storm this week. Yeah, I was surprised at that too because the Storm weren't. Very lackluster last week. Yeah. And this is notoriously a tough game. Yeah, Warriors rock up for it. I know recently they haven't got the W in this, but yeah, they've, they're playing well enough to... Like, I'm almost going to tip them. I don't know who I'm going to tip yet. I've tipped it's good Storm. value. Yeah. Because like, what if what if the Storm that we saw last week or early in the year rocks up? Yeah. Big Nass is back Nass is back though, yeah, that's a problem. I just think four problem. bucks is a... Well, I mean, it's the value better the week, surely. Yeah, like surely. zero doubt. You know, anyway, what, else, we'll you know what else I think is value? <laughs> yeah. I know this is gonna fuck Tigers. I agree. They they got to get a win. And when's the last time uh, Manly have won away from home? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's been like eight months or something. <laughs> like it, it, you look at Manly, they've just come off this crazy high. Yeah, they're going to play the Tigers. Tigers are absolutely desperate. Mm. Like. I'm not saying they'll win, but they're what are they three fifty or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I don't. I I give them a sniff. I for give sure, them a the sniff. Tigers. I really yeah. do. It won't. I really I, do. It won't be a flogging. I don't. I, think I don't something. think it will be either. Yeah. I don't think it will be either. I mean, look, we'll eat our words probably. Um, but <laughs> uh, all right, let's get to this bludger of a game. <laughs> not even that interesting, to be honest. <laughs> Rabbitohs beat Panthers. Yep. All right, now I'm to betting this week. <laughs> um, no, Rabbitohs beat Panthers in one of, in the best game. Of the year so far zero doubt in the world zero doubt in the world because we've had close games that are exciting mm. but we haven't had high quality close games it was that quality from zero to 80th minute it was there was a 10 minute period in the second half where south kept making errors coming out of their end mm -hmm. besides that it was a near perfect game from each team and and defensively it was it was just ridiculous 85% completion rate and 82% completion rate uh, for the, you know, for either Each side. Team. And it was just a fantastic game. Like, it had everything. It had absolutely everything. I think I actually, you know, Panthers did so well to kind of get it back into it and, and push out this lead. But when you actually watch the game, it was because of Rabideau's errors. Yeah. Like, which sounds like so cliche, of course. But no, no, these you could directly go Latrell error, try. Uh, Isaiah Tass, Tass error, yeah. try. And then before yeah. half time, uh, poor miss from Tass, yeah. try. try. And so, like, these are, this isn't like they were completely outplayed and that's why the points got put on them. These were errors from the Rabbitohs. So yeah. it would have almost, like, I was sitting there going, I was about to come in on Monday and be like really disappointing from the Rabbitohs yep. because the game was there to win. They'd done so well, especially all that first half. They'd done so well and they just let it slip. But to come back the way they did, incredible, incredible. Trelly Mitt, oh, seriously, oh my God. amazing. What about, and I know he did a million things, but just what about early in the game inside his own half, that flick pass? To Alex Johnston. Ran backwards, bumped someone off, and then flicked past. Oh, my Like, God. what the hell is going on there? It just shows you, like, Penrith Panthers are, one, are seriously one of the greatest assembled teams in the history of the game. Oh, yeah. Um, and I know people look back at, you know, you can go to the 80s or, I don't know, 60s. So and I saw I saw Freddie and Joey, Freddie in the 8th, um, also on Channel 9, talking about pe comparing Penrith teams, and they were comparing them to teams the – 
the Raiders of the 90s and the Bronx of the 90s. But again, neither of us watched it then. So Yeah, but you could go further back when St. George won 11, 11 in a row or whatever it was. Uh, but was it St. George or Illawarra? St. George Dragons, St. yeah. St. George. But the difference is, is the landscape of rugby league has changed because mm. back then, you know, we didn't have as many Polynesian or Indigenous players. So it's a totally different ball game now. Yeah, um, true. You know, so there's, there's a bigger population able to play rugby league now. Mm. So it's, I'm, not, I'm not detracting from what they did at all. What I'm saying is, is you can't even really compare those teams. You can only really compare the Panthers now, as you said, from probably the 80s onwards yeah. is, is the teams you can compare to because, like, that's when we start to get it, you know, more people into the game kind of thing. Mm. And so there's no denying that they are one of the greatest teams ever assembled, in, in my opinion, of the modern era anyway. And so you've got great teams, but then you've got generational talents that go, there's levels. And Terrell showed that on, the, the, on last night. Terrell came out and said... Yeah, this, you're a great team. You're a great team, and there's no denying that. But I am a once-in-a-lifetime talent yeah. that everything – my body is made to play rugby league. Like, I am designed to, make, to play rugby league. I've got, you know, so much footy smarts, so much intelligence on the field. Mix that with instinct. Mix that with genetic – unbelievable genetics, and that's what you get. Unbelievable from Troll. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It's just – the South and Panthers are two great teams. And when South were down with eight to go, when Crichton scored his third try, I won't lie, I conceded at that point. Mm. I was like, I was, it was actually really, this sounds, sounds weird, but like, it was really upsetting because it's just like, we play so well oh, no. against the Panthers, but we, we could just never beat them, right? Yeah. But what separated them was you're right this once in a generation talent latrell who three weeks ago was getting dragged through the media and through mm. social media because people said he didn't get involved enough and maybe he didn't and if he's been reading those headlines maybe he's been reading those headlines because the last three weeks he's been absolutely everywhere and when he stamps when he puts his stamp on the game there's he's unmatched in the nrl yeah. he's absolutely unmatched because it's a mixture like so you've got a guy like nathan cleary who was like probably going to be He's on track to be one of the greatest sevens of, of yeah. all time. Yeah. He may even become the best seven of all time. Yeah. Like, put it this way. You put Cleary in any side, they make finals footy. Any oh, side. Sure. Yeah. And there's not many sevens you can say that about. Um, and he's easily the most complete half. Yeah, complete the half. Take that incredible talent and ability, yeah. mix it with once-in-a-lifetime genetics yeah, exactly. of Trell, and that's what you get. You get yeah. this Greg Inglis, Latrell Mitchell, Mal Meningas, and that's what Latrell is at the moment. On top of that, Cody Walker. Oh, he he's a footy player. This kid. I love that we t we spoke about um, how many try involvements he had on the Monday show. And just if you really watch that South last try again, and trust me, I watched it a lot. <laughs> he just he's in the middle of the field mm. about a, two seconds before he catches it, and he just had this instinct to just sprint up and hit that hole at the perfect time. And AJ just knew he was going to be, it was just time to perfection. And he just, he came across field. He was like not standing very deep and then just hit the hole mm. so perfectly. And then we all know what he can do with his hands. That yep. ball to Tass was brilliant, but yeah, Cody's support play is very, very, very good. And yep. he, he showed that again last night. And it's just when, when Cody's on and Latrell's on, how do you stop that? Like Penrith are the best defensive, close to the best defensive team I've ever seen in my life. They're unbelievable. And their, their defense is seriously it's, crazy. It's crazy. Well, before going into before tonight, they were better defensively than they were last year at this time. There you go. And they let in South scored four tries in today. And I don't. I'm yeah. pretty sure they haven't conceded four. I mean, they might have. I don't know, but. They've been they've been conceding about twelve points a game. Yeah, so it's amazing. Um, I thought Harme Sele was really really he good. He was incredible. He had a couple of errors in the middle of the second half, but besides that, he yeah. And he's just come back from injury too, so he's he's going to be. Because what I found fast. really interesting is Tom Burgess has been used sparingly. I thought, and I don't know if this is normal. Maybe because I was at the game, I noticed he he started on the bench and then he came off before half time. Mm. It was it was it was kind of weird. His his first half stint was great, mm. but. Um, yeah, interesting that one. Uh, Damien Cook, 
I think he's playing some really good footy. And what I said at the start of this year, I think we're going to see a really good year from Cookie. Yep. And he's just building into it, building into it. I mean, you can make the argument he's a front runner for the nine roll right now. I think he, I think he because is, you've yeah. got Appy that's, that's at the Tigers, who you know he's trying his best, but no one's going with him. Yeah. Um, You've got Reese Robson at the Cowboys. Unfortunately, they're going so poorly that well, it's going to be tough. They're, at the moment, they're 16th and 17th. And and Freddie's known to pick players yeah. in winning teams. And so you go, okay, well, we need an 80-minute hooker. Even though the, the rotation is good, the rotation didn't really work last year for us. If we do go cookie, then at least we can bring Hines on the bench. Yeah. Um, and I'd, I, I just respect the hell out of cookie. The fact that, you know, very, uh, very often... You get dropped from, you know, rep honours or whatever, and then you just never get seen again. It's kind of like, you know, yeah, you plateau yeah. out and you end your career. But he's making a massive claim for that nine jersey yeah. for New South Wales. 100%. Massive claim. And like we all know what he can do in attack, and he obviously <coughs> scored that try yesterday. Just go look at his tackle stats. He just doesn't miss tackles, Cookie. I know. He's, he's so fit. He's not big, but yeah, you're right. He's so fit. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was, he was great. Now, onto the Penny Panthers. Um, Actually, one more, one more person I want to shout out, and I said this on Monday. One of South Achilles' heel this year has been defending kicks, and made a lot of errors in the first seven weeks, like people putting bomb up bombs up. And I was really worried coming to this game because clearly he's the best bomb in the game. They peppered Tane Mill all mm, night, mm. and he did not drop one ball. Yeah. He was unbelievable, and he wasn't even he wasn't even supposed to play. Yeah. So shout out Tane. His him under the high ball was incredible. Yeah. Nah, he, he, he's um, definitely improving his game. Yeah. Now, under the Penny Panthers, um, oh, man, I love Critter. I love Critter. He's such a big game player. Holy shit. But it was actually a mixed bag. Yeah. I think the three tries actually, um, I guess... Masked. Masked his defence. I was like, what's going on there? Like, yeah. you know, look, when it mattered... He got that intercept off Cody Walker. So it's like he'll yeah. always have that in the back pocket going, hang on a sec. When we're in the grand final, I got that intercept. But last night, the Rabbitohs used that against him. Constantly, he was looking for that intercept and constantly they found a way around him. Yeah. So I think he's just got to, even though what he did in attack was outstanding. Like without Critter, they don't even get close to winning that game. Mm. Um, but defensively, it, you know, we had this issue earlier in the year where he was rushing out for against the Broncos for intercepts. Yeah, he, I think he's just got to just bring it back a little bit, the intercept attempts, and just go, you know what, let me make my tackles. When it feels right, it'll come. It'll come. Because, um, But in attack, I mean, bloody hell, so good. He's, he's, he's unbelievable. Like probably his best attacking game all year, just defensively just had some, some misreads. Yeah. Um, I was just sorry. I was just looking up while you were – Looking up, um, talking about Critter. Isaiah Yo's missed four tackles this year. I know, I was about to say. Isaiah, <laughs> yeah, this year, I was going to say, this is what I was going to say next. Yeah. Isaiah, yeah, these are his stats 188 metres, 45 tackles, zero misses. Oh, he's great. Fuck, he's good. He's so good that he does shit like this and no one's talking about it. Yeah. Unbelievable. And like he still does what he does in attack, like being that link man and. Yeah, but his defensive work is just – it really flies under the radar. It, it does. 45 tackles, no zero missed. misses. Against – like, Troll broke 14 tackles last night. Like, ten, like against the, one of the most potent attacks in the comp. Mm. Yeah. Um, another shout-out, Spencer Lino. I thought he was oh, massive. Oh, what about that run before? He was destroying you off the bench. Uh, I thought he was really good. But, look, nothing to worry about with the, with the, the Panthers. The it, Panthers it's, played well. It was a good game. All it is, it's a case of you're the Kings now and everyone wants to take a shot at the King. Yeah. Whereas, you know, for you to get up to every, up for every game, it's like a UFC champion. You know, it's much more easy to be motivated as the challenger mm. than it is the guy that's going for his fifth title defence. And the Panthers are in their third title defence. Yeah. And they were still up for it. Yeah, and they've been third title defence and they were the minor premiers the year before as well. So they've yeah. been they've been at the top for so, so long. Like, 20 to 18, yeah, okay, you could say that they did lose that game in regards to they had it in the bag and they lost it. But Rabbitohs are the challengers. Mm. They're the ones that are desperate, desperate for a premiership. So I think Panthers are totally fine. Absolutely nothing to worry yeah, about. Yeah, I know, look, and I know they've lost, how many games they lost this year? Three now? 
Yeah. Three now? Broncos, Eels. Eels, Rabbits. Which is not too bad. Nah, like, come on. Yeah. Round one. And don't forget, these Panthers boys had no preseason because they had to play the World Club Challenge. Mm. And they had a lot of plays in the World Cup too. So it is not a surprise that they've, <laughs> I'm going to say started slow. They haven't mm. started slow. They've started slow in terms of win-loss results. Yeah. But, I mean, this was their biggest loss of the year and it was two points. It was two points. It, like, like, yeah. That's how good this team is. Yeah. Like, you can learn a bit about people in wins, for sure. No denying that. But the, the what we're learning about this Panthers side in their losses is, I reckon, even more than what we learn in their wins. When they're losing by one point, Broncos are on top of the table. Yeah. Eels in the grand final last year. Eels hate the Panthers. Of course they're going to get out. Yeah. Rabbitohs hate the Panthers. Hate the Panthers. Like, you know what I mean? They're only losing by a point or two points. Did it come across on TV, all the chirping that was happening last yeah. night? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I love that shit. Oh, my God. It's so good. Love so it. good for rugby league. It's so good for rugby league. Like, I, I get it. From a player's perspective, I would hate it. I'd be like, fuck those guys, like, talking shit. They think they're better, rah, rah. Of course, I'm a competitor. From a fan's perspective, it's like, yes, let's go, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, so Panthers, I, I, I'm just so impressed with that club. Like the way their their ability to, if they're going to lose, you have to fight tooth and nail for it. Mm. You have to give everything. If you're going to take this W office, we'll take everything from you. Yep. It's just, it's so impressive. So yep. impressive. Um, I still like, they're still premiership favourites. For no, sure. for sure. Yeah. For sure, like I, I was, like some people were, I don't know who I was listening to, but they were like, oh, you know, Panthers have been a bit stop starting. And I was like, I don't really think they have been. Like, mm. I, I think we're forgetting that they used to grind out games last year as well. Like yeah. they weren't just blowing everyone off the park. It, matter of fact, the year they were blowing everyone off the park was the year that Storm ended up beating them in the grand final. Yeah. And then they changed the way they played and they started to become grindy in that. So, well, so you went to the ground last night? Yeah, I was there. It was my first game of the year, actually. Actually, no, I went to round one at Shark Park, but I was in the worst spot. I mean, count it. Um, yeah, it was... It was. I, I normally go to all the games, all the Rabbitohs games, but for whatever reasons, haven't been able to go to all this year. And it was... Um, yeah, it was really nice to be back. I'd obviously rather the South home game be at Allianz, but um, that was good. Took forever to get out of the car park. <clears throat> It's a different story. Look, I'm noticing that there's no weird stories here this week. Is that because you were just so focused on the Rabbitohs Panthers win? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I actually looked for one today. I just there was nothing that really hit. Really? So, yeah. There was. It's they're not as easy to find as you think. Like, mm. yeah. Surely there's websites that just have like weird stories. There was weird stuff. I just didn't think it was that good. I'll look a bit harder next week. Yeah. Everyone's got a weird story or two. Yeah. You know what's weird is like you could be friends with a bloke. And then when you find out like some something weird about him, you're like, "What the fuck? Where did this come from? Like, who are you, bro?" But it's everyone's got their own thing, you know. Yeah. I feel like that's which is cool. It's fine. Have your own thing, dude. All good as long as it's fucking not as disgusting. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I, I feel like every bloke has like one thing that he's too afraid to say to his mates that he likes. Yeah, I, I got one. What's what oh, it's it? not weird. It's just like I don't like to admit it that much. I'm, I love Taylor Swift. She's a gun. Yeah. Fucking oath I love Taylor Swift. Yeah. Oi, she's a gun. She's one of the best songwriters, best yeah. producers of everything. Best storytellers. Best storytellers. She is seriously talented. She's not like a manufactured pop star. No. She is an absolute gun. No, I agree with you. And her latest album, uh, what's it called? Not Lavender Haze. Mid that's the first Midnight. song. Midnight. Oh, Midnight? Yeah, something at Midnight. Yeah. That came out when me and the missus were over in Europe. Yeah. So it obviously holds a special place in their mm, hearts. Nice. Uh, but yeah, Taylor Swift is, if you get a chance, watch your documentary. The thing oh. is, is like, I, I, I like all music. Yeah. Like, the, I, I'm not scared to say I enjoy softer, air quotation marks, music. Because you know what? If you're a bloke and you pretend you don't, you're taking the piss, bro. Oh, I, I, I would love to like go on the street mm. and just say to someone, show me your listening now page yep. on Spotify yep. and they will hesitate. Everyone will hesitate. Everyone. And, and I, let, let's remove the stigma around yeah. it. Oi, doesn't make you more of a bloke if you listen to heavy metal. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Oi, brah, doesn't make you more of a bloke. It just means you like heavy metal. Yeah. It's that simple. If you listen to slow, romantic, I mean, I, you know what I listen to? I listen to the House of the Dragon soundtrack. <laughs> That's what I fucking listen to. 
You know what I mean? Does that make me less of a bloke? No, it doesn't. I'll wrestle you. Let's see who's the bloke then. Um, so yeah, let's get let's get rid yeah, of the stigma. Rid of let's get rid of the stigma around soft music. Soft music's beautiful. Mm. And also, like, I will say though, mm. I will say one thing that I don't like. Yeah. Don't like it all, and a lot of blokes do it. So I'm in the minority here. Well, I don't know if I am. Dudes that act like babies around your missus. Fucking disgusting. Oh, yeah. Bro, grow the fuck up. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and like, they're like doing all baby stuff. I don't, I don't mean funny stuff, like dancing yeah. and having fun. I'm talking like baby stuff. Yeah, it's, 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 it's Sicko weird. Sicko territory. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's cringe as. Oh, yuck. Oh. And bro, she's not your mum. Yeah. Be a man and grow up, bro. Oh. Because you know what I'm talking about, hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've, yeah. All, like, we've all known a bloke that, like, you, you find somehow you find out him doing some weird baby <laughs> stuff. Like, because, like, because, like, sometimes girls can act like, you know, they can be feminine and act a bit baby ish. Yeah. And it's okay. Like, it's whatever. They're different to men. I've, I'll never understand them. But when I see blokes do it, I'm like, oh my God, oh. what's going on there? Cringed out of my mind. <laughs> Oh, it's making me cringe just thinking about oh, it. Oh, my God. Actually, you, you know what? There's a good page on Instagram. If, I think if you just type in cringe mm. and, like, it shows you the cringes, like, TikToks, the cringes, like... Oh, really? Oh, man. This is... Oh, I mean, I won't describe it because it's boring when you describe it. Yeah. But if you ever want to, like, have a weird laugh but also cringe, just go cringe on Instagram or TikTok. Mm. And some of the stuff that comes up, you're going, holy heck is that? Man, some people cannot handle cringe humour. Like, people... Some people can't even watch The Office because they're like, I can't, I can't watch Oh, this. cringe is too hard. Yeah, too hard for them to watch. Yeah. Really? Mm. See, I'm talking, like, actual cringe. Actual cringe. Like, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, they can't even watch that. Really? Let alone, like... Wow. Cringe shit on oh, wow. TikTok. Man. Yeah, yeah. So don't act like a baby around your missus, bruh. She's not your mum, and maybe sort out the mummy issues, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking weird. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's like blokes always talk about. Oh, she's got daddy issues, rah rah. It's yeah. like there's, yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of blokes out there with mummy oh, issues, boys. 100% there is. Uh, yep. so don't be <laughs> don't be <laughs> throwing stones in glass houses, yeah. boys, because there's a lot of us that have mummy issues. Oh. Um, and I don't mean us as in us, but I mean us as in all blokes. Yeah, in general. Um, so that is a pet hate. But let's remove the stigma. What's another? So, so okay, here's one. I'm not worried, scared to say it. People don't know that. But the weekend is the man. I love his music. Yeah. I fucking love his music. Did I hear recently that he's the most most streamed artist most in the world? Most in the world, yeah. Most no, so he's got the most streaming listeners, I think. Uh, and also, "Blinding Lights" is the most streamed uh, song in the history of uh, okay. music. You know what's really interesting about the weekend? So when he came out, it would have been I don't know, 2010 or whatever. And so maybe a bit earlier. I'm not sure what it was. So like, I hadn't really. I was still young, so I hadn't really experienced life that much, and. I'd, my whole life had just been about footy, but nothing really, other than being bullied through high school, nothing I'd, had really affected me that badly mm. um, in primary school. So I got bullied quite a lot. Well, not quite a lot, a lot. I remember this one time. <laughs> so I was in like, would have been year seven, and basically I'd gone away to a, not a, I don't think it was called QISM, but like a Queensland soccer camp. Yeah. And at the end of the camp, so you do the camp, you play for the sides, whatever. And at the end of the camp, they review you, which is like, when you think back, you're like, oh, that's pretty hectic for a young fella. Yeah. But it's also good because it teaches you good habits. Anyway, they review and they're like, this is what, you know, you did well. This is what you need to work on. And one of the things I needed to work on was my touch. Mm -hmm. which, and the touch in soccer for people that are footy fans is basically just my control with my feet. Like a long ball comes in, I can trap it yeah. at my body or, you know, I can move the ball close to my body without it, you know, flying off and getting tackled or whatever. Anyway, so I got back from a sports trip and um, had no friends and they were all bullying me or whatever. So what I would do is I would go down to like the corner of the, the oval yep. and I would be practicing my touch, my juck. So I'd be juggling all through lunchtime in both lunch breaks because I just wanted to be better, a better soccer player. And so what they would do is so if one guy tried to take the ball from me he couldn't because like i wasn't like athletic or whatever yeah. so i just run away, i just would go away or whatever and so what they do is there would have been i don't know about 15 of them they'd link arms so link arms holy and shit. then like run at me <laughs> like 
just continually run at me so I couldn't like because I couldn't run around the linking what of the, the arms. Fuck? Yeah. This is like proper fucking <laughs> bullish. This is this isn't just teasing. This is proper yeah. fucking drama oh. shit. And so and like I because and it was like I'm down in the oval just trying to like in the corner of the oval just trying to get better at soccer. Oh. And these guys are literally linking arms and like running at me so that I couldn't do what I like wanted to do. Uh, there's oh, there's plenty of other times they used to come together and you know those Fanta bottles uh, with the hard plastic tops on yeah, it. Yeah, they used to fucking throw them at me all the time. So I one time I think you got bullied. I didn't realize it was like fucking yeah, no, no it's pretty hectic. Jesus. And then so this one time when they were it was getting hectic or whatever, I ran and I there used to be a swamp. This was in high school. There mm. used to be like a swamp at the back of our school. And I hid in the swamp so they couldn't fucking pelt me with these um these bottles. Yeah. Anyway, my fucking knee got fully infected. Oh. And I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want to tell, like, you don't want to tell you getting bleed or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And so it was so infected that you could literally push my knee down and just pus would just ooze oh. all the way out. And I just like let it just let it until it went okay, like okay again. How old what was this primary school you said? No, that that one was high school. Uh. Jesus. So basically what would happen is, is like, I would always be like, look, if you just be nice enough to people, they'll turn around. Yeah. Um, but eventually I just started like every, probably every second year, I would just say, let's fucking go have a crack. And I <laughs> would punch on and that would, that would, that would stop it for a, a year or so. Yeah. And then it'd start again. Yeah. And then I'd punch, punch on, on and then it would stop and then it'd start again. And then I'd punch on and then it would stop. And so, yeah, Fuck. I don't know how we got down that route. Oh, anyway. You must have hated school. I hated every second of school. Wow. Like I, they, people that go, oh, I miss school so much. Yeah, it's like, I there's not a single part of me that wants to go back to school. I oh, hated right. it. Hated it. Oh, I can see why. And well, oh. no, nah, but it, like this is not a woe is me story. Yeah, I know, but it's pretty like, hectic. It's not a fucking like, <laughs> oh, poor Dan. Yeah. Like it, it caught, gave me fire. It gave me yeah. fire. Like I'm almost grateful for it because, mm. well, I am grateful for it because it gives you fire. Anyway, so. The weekend first came out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all ties together, I promise you. It all ties together. Yeah. And so, like, when I was, like, coming out of school, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't, like, judgy as in, like, I would judge people and be like, you're a bad person. But, like, when – so he used to see, speak, like, sing about some really, like – cheating on his missus and right. treating people really poorly yep. and I always used to be like i can't listen to this music this guy's a bad person yeah. like he's a bad person anyway it wasn't until i got older and like things that happened to me in my life that i realized that people that treat people poorly they've usually got trauma oh, from something in their yeah. life and so you can start to relate to the music more because you understand like you know the weekend used to be homeless you had yeah. a broken home and so as you get older you become more understanding that if someone's a bad person or something bad is happening in their life, it isn't about you. It's yeah. about whatever is happening inside of them. Hurt people, hurt people. Exactly, exactly. And so the, it's only been like the last few years where I like love his music now, mm. even though like I'm not, I can't relate in regards to like what he does oh, shit, or, yeah. or he sings about. I can relate in regards to, I can understand where he's coming from and the music becomes better. And so, yeah, The weekend is the fucking goat for me right now. So obviously Eminem will always be the goat, but right yeah. now weekend's the goat. Interesting. I've never, yeah, I've never really got into the weekend, but that's a really interesting story. Fuck me, dead. Yeah, well, fucking hell, eh? And uh, we'll wrap it up now, boys. Uh, <laughs> Got to go see a counselor. <laughs> that's a therapist. I, no, I, I crew. I just I cruise through school. No, I, no, but yeah. let me be clear. Oh, this is not a fucking sook story. That's not a sook story at all. Mm. But it does. It sometimes you need to. You need to get men need to be physical with men sometimes, in yeah. my opinion. Anyway, I know that that's not the right thing to say. Yeah. But at at, at some because like what what happens is, and this is all just anecdotal, is that young men can kind of sniff out not weakness, but like they can they pick on who they can pick on. Mm. If you know what I mean. Yeah, of course, yeah. And until you show them, set a boundary and say, "Bra, you keep going, we're going." They'll just keep doing it. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, I had this idolized idea that if you just be nice enough for someone for some long enough, that they will they'll come around. They'll come around, yeah. but it's not like it's not that. Like You've got to set like boundaries that. and you've yeah. got to stand up for yourself. Um, but the weekend's music's great. Yeah, it's been <laughs> I don't know where to go from that. <laughs> <laughs> How good's rugby league? How good's rugby league? What are you a car dude? I you know what? I was talking about this. Oh no, I was listening to um, Bloody Brilliant Beers and Das is the same. I could not tell you a single car, like except for the car that I used to drive. Mm. I, I have no idea about anything. Mm. Like when an Uber comes, I'm like, fuck, I've got not. 
it's like Hyundai X3, whatever. I'm like, mm. I've, I'm just looking for the color. Yeah. And the number plate. Are you? Bro, I'm the same. Yeah. Like as in, like I know nice cars as in nice brands. Oh, I know the, I know the brands, but I can't like differentiate cars and that. Yeah, yeah. People are like, that's an S13 500 with a V8 turbocharged fucking some. I'm like, bro, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. But when I was over in Europe, like I've always, so I just drive a Holden Cruise right now. Yeah. And it's 2010 or some shit. So it's an old, just an old car. And, you know, I probably could get a better car if I wanted to. Um, and so this whole time I'd be like, yeah, but like, why? Because mm. what happens is, is you get a nice car and you get used to it. Yeah, exactly. So for the first month- It's like, you sit it's like anything. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like anything. So the first month you're going, this is sick, mad seats, mad sound system, rah, rah, rah. Anyway, so I've always been like, you know what? And also, like, I don't want to fall into the cliche of like, I don't want to mm. be a cliche of like, oh, you know, how good is Ken? Be thinking he's got a nice car and that. Mm. But, you know, I bought my wife a, a nice Mazda. Like, it's it's like a family car. Yeah. And it is good. It is nice having a good, new, clean car, you know? Yeah, I, I understand. Like, my so I, I did, my car got written off last year. Mm. Sydney flooded, like, last March. So mm. we're going back more than a year now. It was a rap, total rap for it, wrote it off because um, the someone- Wasn't it the beach thing? Sorry? That beach thing that you went to or some shit? I might think of something else. No, something oh, else. Okay. Um, the wind, the sunroof got left open like a little bit and the rain went in, uh, not by me, by Courtney. And it completely fucked the car. Yep. And so I just, cause I walked to work. I just um, share hers. She's a rev head. She fucking loves cars. Mm. Uh, she's got an old uh, like Commodore. Mm. So we drive, it's pretty old, so we drive that around. But then sometimes when I need to like go places like far, like if I need to drive to, like I drove to Port Macquarie the other day mm. for the long weekend, um, I'll ask my dad if I can borrow his car. And he's got this mad, like really new, cause they don't make Commodores anymore, but it's like one of the newest Commodores and yeah. it's just sick. Like it's I don't just, like cars, but it's yeah. just so cool It's to nice be in. to sit in it. I oh. think, look, I think there's like a level where you can get the car and it's nice, it's great. But then I think anything over that level, you're just spending it for the social status that you have this crazy car. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. a social status of this car. But I will say, so I was over, when I was over in Europe, if you order like uh, Uber, I don't know, not, I don't know, it's like VIB, Uber Luxury or something like that. It's like not even that much more expensive, mm. but your Uber will come quicker. Mm. And so we were like, you know, like trench coats dressed all like European or whatever. <laughs> And I will admit, sitting in the back of those nice cars, I was like, <laughs> this is pretty cool. This is yeah. pretty cool. I felt like I was in a movie in New York or something. It was really cool. I think as well, that, like you say the social status, there is obviously as well the people that do love, love cars. Oh, yeah, and for now, sure. And now, for but sure. like the regular block. Majority of people though yeah. that have those cars, it's a social they're status doing it, thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They couldn't no. tell you the first thing about what they're driving. Nah, not at all. Like the open, they'll, like my, um, I was talking to my mechanic recently, oh, for um, Courtney's car, and he was telling me he went to the summer mechanic show, and they all like walk around with the, like their hoods up and stuff. I'm like, holy fuck, shit. like Mate, I couldn't tell you the single thing neither. that's in that thing. Neither, yeah. seriously. My, I, I think my dream is in like I think the top of like where I would like to have is like maybe a Mercedes, but like mm. not like a fucking three hundred grand one or whatever. Yeah, but like I think that would be the nicest I could go. Like, because like let's say I earn. A squillion dollars. Like, I could, let's say I became super rich. Mm. I just, like, I would like to buy a Ferrari. Yeah. But I know I wouldn't want to own one. But there's no point having a Ferrari in Sydney anyway. That's you're, what I mean. You just like, sit in traffic. They're just sitting in traffic. <laughs> and so it's like, so I'm like, well, okay, I, there is a part of my ego that sometimes wants to go, yeah, fuck yeah, like yeah. Ferrari, buy nice things, be the man, all that kind of stuff. But I also understand that, like, once you purchase that Ferrari, you're going to get used to it and over yeah, it. Yeah, you will. After and so I always think if I ever got that rich, I think I would just like rent it for a week to get it out of my system. Yeah, Do you know true. what I mean? You rent it for a week, you get it out of your system that you got to buy and you got to experience it and be good. And look, as, a, as you said, when, if you're a car head, we understand yeah, that's yeah. a different, it's your passion. Different, yeah, yeah. It's totally different. So, but I'm talking about normal people. Yeah. Like rent it, get it out of your head, get it out of your <laughs> system and then just have your normal nice, like really nice high-end Mazda or, mm. you know, a lower-end Mercedes or something like that. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I think that's smart. Yeah. I, like, for, like, honestly, for me, my, if I, 
Like I want to. I just want to buy my dad's car. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Yeah, that's all I want. Because they're just it's, they've got everything you need. Yeah, and it's it's super nice, but mm. it's like it's not it's nothing crazy. And I just just, just don't. It's yeah. It's I just don't care enough to be honest. But you're right. Getting a it'd be cool to, to cruise around in a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or whatever. For, just for like a for little night. bit. Yeah. Because but also the attention as well. Like if you imagine seeing the beak in a Ferrari, people are <laughs> like, oh, what the fuck, bro? Be weird. <laughs> A bit weird. Um, not that I mean I'm a million years away from that. I'll probably never be able to afford one. But, I, I, you know, you always – well, a man can dream. You can dream. A man can dream. Mm. A man can dream. Um, now, let's talk about some betting. Brought to you always by Sportsbet. Gamble responsibly, guys. You win some, but you lose more. Para versus the Broncos tonight, 8 o'clock. You might not know this. You bounced um, – oh, actually, I forgot to tell you. So I did the ad for you at the end, like the grab a case of bloke, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I butchered it so hard about three. I'll, I'll have to show you the, um, the the blue part. Like, I've listened to you say it so many times, and yep. I, just could, I just couldn't do it. It was so <laughs> embarrassing. Um, anyway, yeah, you might not know this. Me, Guru, because i got Guru's tips. Mm. Me, Guru, and Timmy have all gone para. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow! Fucking how dare you! I know it's. I thought I was like gonna steam in with like a mad, mad win. Yeah, and everyone else got it wrong. But now you, you fucking you're on dogs. the favorite. <laughs> yeah. get, I leave early and get betrayed. <laughs> Absolutely betrayed. Yeah. Uh, well, Bronx paying dollar sixty five. Eels. Oh, you will get to it later. Uh, Eels two twenty five. Yeah, I'm going Bronx, but this is going to be a cracker. Like, I'm so pumped for this game. Fucking cracker! I'll be actually live tonight with Tom and Eddie. Hello, sport on their YouTube channel. Doggies versus sharks. Yeah, I think um, I just have a feeling that doggies five fifty though. That's a that's fucking. Fair that's a lot. Right. I get they're decimated. I just think Nico really wants to play Origin. He's I too hot to handle. Right yeah, now. and he, he's gonna he's gonna carve through him. I reckon. Cowboys Knights. Man, this one's hard. This Cowboys one's... paying dollar sixty five. Knights two twenty five. I'm going Knights. I have Tim Knights as well. Yeah, I'm going Knights. Just Cowboys losing Tamalolo. That's like, the one. Yeah. I reckon Tamalolo was playing. I might have gone cows. Yeah. Dolphins, Titans, Dolphins, dollar seventy four, Titans two ten. Tough, like such a tough. I'm going Titans. I went Titans as well. And you know what? Cheeky, like I don't. I'm not going to back this to happen, mm. but I would be privately considering a thirteen plus Titans. To- thirteen plus Titans. Yes. Why? Why? Like, well, because they've got that in them. They do, don't they? You know what I mean? Like, and so if they win, there's a world where they win fucking thirteen plus because yeah. they're the Gold Coast Titans with Brimo back. Is he definitely back? Oh, I mean, he's in the, in the squad. But yeah, he's, he's yeah, getting potentially, close. yeah. yeah. They'll yeah. probably give him to a kickoff. Wow. I don't know. I just They've just got it in them. So, as I said, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's my pick. Yeah. But don't be surprised if they, if they do something special. I'm, I'm not against it. No way. Because they towed the Broncos up for the first half yeah. last week. That's why I've tipped them for that reason. Yeah. Uh, but the, the Dolphins shock you every week. I know. Yeah. Every week you, you underestimate yeah. them when they bloody come out and do what they do. Um, uh, Tigers, Eagles, Eagles. Yeah, I'm going Manly. Yeah, I'm going Manly too. But uh, 350, I thought they were a bit higher than that. Oh, yeah, see, it's not as high as... still a bit of value there. I can see an upset happening. I really can. Because, mm. like, look, at they they got to win at some stage. Yeah. they got to get their first win. Yeah. They've had a bye. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm still going Manly. I'm going Manly. Uh, Roosters, Dragons, and going with Roosters. Roosters, yep. Line of six. Storm, Warriors, going Storm. I'm going Storm, but I'm I'm seriously considering like my tip in my tipping comp hasn't been setting concrete yet. But I'm but for the sake because we have to do it now. I'm going, I'm going Storm. I probably will go Storm, but mm. four bucks. Oh my god, I'm tempted. Tempted. I might. All right. I might. Imagine, could you imagine like Warriors thirteen plus? How much would be paying? <laughs> Even Warriors one to twelve, you're paying like five fifty or something. I yeah. don't, don't have it in front of me, but yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. Um, yep. Anyway, that's our tips for the week. Mm. Uh, also, well, not also. Next segment, Maddie's question for me. Mad oh Mother. yes. So, so I, I'm going to pub Pubgo tomorrow, and no one like is a dress up, and no one um, no one knows what to dress up as. For Mad Monday, I want to know two things. When you did Mad Monday, firstly. Like, did you guys like dress up and like, what did you just like have themes or whatever? Did you do, just do whatever you want? And secondly, I, I reckon most people were like, what did a Mad Monday look like for you guys? <laughs> like, I actually have no idea. I, you were just here, Mad Monday, you just <clears throat> get on the piss, but like, what is um, actually a Mad Monday well, entail? It varies for clubs. Uh, what in your experience? So basically, dress up is just anything pretty, well, for me right. anyway, it was anything like the Dragons Mad Monday. It was anything. I dressed up as Matt Shervington. 
<laughs> um, nice. And so, yeah, and then like, you know, a few of the Camp King, I think he was like uh, Toad from um, Mario, <laughs> Mario Kart. Kart yeah. You know, so like that was anything. Um, and basically, <coughs> it, yeah, it just depends. Like usually you all go back to someone's house. Yeah. You just go go nuts. Mm. Um, sometimes buses are arranged and you get locked in a room, like in a, a back room of a pub somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's 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 usually it. Right. Usually so it's it. pretty much pretty much just all the boys together in a room just yeah. drinking beers Music, and talking shit. Yeah. Beers, you know, whatever else you fucking fancy. Well, I, mate, I honestly had no idea. I just thought, oh, did they did they go on like pub crawls? Did they do I honestly nah, had no, you can't, no you can't, I mean I, yeah, it's not like a night out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You're not going clubbing and that. I mean some guys might shoot off, but usually you're tucking in at a house. I guess, you know, after you've been training and mm. working so hard together oh. for a year. Well, it just depends what night. I think the first night you might go a bit clubbing or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Second day in that, it's more just fucking yeah, the boys are in. Together. Yeah. Cool. Something I wanted to know. No, something I want to know. Yeah. Uh, now, 10,000 hours. The saying goes, to master a skill, you need to put in 10,000 hours of practice. If you click your fingers and have 10,000 hours of skill in anything, what would it be? I was thinking about this. I... I don't like golf that much, but mm. I reckon I'd I'd want to be like a gun golfer. To say the best deals are done on golf courses, business deals. Yeah, there's that. And also, like, if you make it professional in golf, like, in most sports, you have to retire in your 30s. Mm. Golf, you can just go forever. That's a good point. That's a good point. No contact on the body. Yeah. Um, but that's – but I guess you're a master. So 10,000 hours, are you saying that you, that would guarantee you as a master Probably what you not. do? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good to be good at golf. I'm trying to think. 10,000 hours. It could be anything. You know what I would like to be, to do is to like, I don't know what the word right, was, like produce movies and TV series. Oh, yeah. Be, be real gun at that. Like, not the writing of scripts in that, yeah. but like the overseeing and decision making of like, this is a good script. Yeah. This isn't a good script. This is just, for, I mean, I've never done it before, so like, I could hate it. Yeah. But to be a, like, imagine releasing like a hectic like TV series yeah, or something. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Like, and everyone's frothing it, and you get to make all the decisions and that. So, yeah, I reckon that. Nice. I reckon that. Interesting. Uh, but that is pack up, boys. Done and adduced. Uh, make sure to grab a case of bloke beer. You guys know it is the beer of rugby league. Give our media a try. We got a store locator, and please do not forget Monday 6 p.m. Bloke dot shop. Ninety-nine dollars for the. 2023 bloke jerseys they're gonna fly guys set your alarms you don't want to miss them the amount of messages i got last year of people filthy they'd miss the old the original jerseys don't be that guy this year or girl <laughs> anyway as usual i'll go and fuck myself what are you really gambling with for free and confidential support visit gamblinghelponline.org.au